Hi, this is Clint, and in this video we're going to be using the Docker Compose file to create a nice network, and then we're going to expose a service for the Z Desktop Edge for Windows, this web test blue service that we have hidden in the private Docker network. And we're going to expose it using a simple, exp uh, simple service as well as using wildcard uh, services or DNS. So let's go ahead and check out how that happens. Here's my Windows terminal in the top. You can see I have run this once before. So I'm going to run Docker Compose down to make sure that I have, uh, I'm not cheating and this is brand new, Docker Compose up. And while that happens, um, I have a bunch of commands off screen which I will be copying and pasting. So if you wonder how it is I, I type so fast, that's how. In this middle screen here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach to the now running ZD Edge controller and I'm going to use docker exec minus IT to get into the docker space. This just makes it a little bit easier to do things like uh, ZD login. In order for this to work, I'm going to have to wait for the controller to come online. So I am simply waiting for these routers to notice that the Edge controller is online. And once it is, fantastic, now I can log in. All right, so once I'm logged in, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an attribute that that marks my ZD Edge router as a public router. So I'm going to use the attribute public on it. And let's do that. ZD Edge update Edge router, ZD Edge router minus A, add the attribute public. Adding that attribute lets me now create a edge router policy that ties all public edge routers to all identities. So we do that using ZD edge create edge router policy, all endpoints, public edge routers for the edge router roles of public identity roles of all. Excellent. Now any, any identity, all or all identities can attach to and get onto the ZD overlay for any edge routers that have the public attribute. Well, let's do the same thing, but this time for, um, services and let's authorize all the edge routers, all the edge routers to use all the services just for simplicity's sake. You can of course get more complicated if you want, but for this demo, we're just going to keep it simple. Next, we're going to make an identity. We're going to use a ZD edge tunnel to provide access to the blue network. If you recall that blue network is the one that has the hidden web test blue inside of it. So basically we're going to take and run a ZD edge tunnel inside of here. And in order to do that, we need an identity and we need to enroll that identity, which I've done uh, in order to provide access to the ZD desktop edge for windows, which I'll bring on screen. Now we're going to need, let me move that over here. We're going to need an identity for this as well. And so I've created that identity. It's called ZDU Clint and it's not available that file. ZDuClint JWT is not available inside of Docker. So I'm going to copy it out of the Docker container so that now I can click on my add identity, type ZDuClint.JWT, and you can see now I have an identity called ZDuClint, which has no services. Now I'll come back and um, create a brand new Docker environment that runs ZD Edge Tunnel so that I can provide access to the service, to that service. So I'll do that using this command. I'm going to do something special. I'm going to allow net admin to be added to this Docker container. And that way I can have access to the ton device so I can make a ton, which is necessary to run ZD Edge Tunnel. Next, I'm going to install wget and unzip, which don't come by default in the quick start, at least not yet. Once that happens, I'm going to then run a wget and pull down the latest version of the ZD Edge Tunnel for Linux. Since I'm running inside a Docker container that's running Linux, now I'm going to unzip it. And you see I have ZD Edge Tunnel. So at this point, because I have a blue.json file, I should be able to run, oops, that was too much. I should be able to run ZD Edge Tunnel run minus I blue.json. So that says run the ZD Edge Tunnel and use the blue.json file provided. There you go. So now we're connected. Um, now I'm going to run a whole bunch of different commands. The first one is going to be to create an, a configuration which will be used for that simple service. 
So now we'll take all of our attention to this middle window where I will run all these commands. So now I'm gonna ZD Edge create config. This is my basic dial. It's going to use TCP. It'll intercept the word, the, uh, the intercept simple web test. And then ports 80 and 80 are the high and the low. I'm going to do the same thing, but for the bind, in this case, the bind will allow my, my ZD Edge tunnel to provide access to the web test blue. If I were to come back here real quick and do a curl to HTTP colon slash slash web test blue port 8000, you'll see this is the Docker uh, whale that I expect to be provided. And that's at web test blue. All right. Now I can go back and I can create the host config. I've done that. So I've, I've made the host v1 config. And now I'm going to provide a service that just knits those two configs together. Now the important parts, I'm going to make a service policy, which allows my blue ZD Edge tunnel to bind the service. ZD Edge create service policy, basic web test service bind blue. We're going to bind using this attribute. Oh, I'm sorry, this identity is the, sorry, this service is the service we're going to uh, attach to. And this is the identity which will be able to uh, do the bind. And then we'll make one for dialing. So now we're saying, hey, the ZD Desktop Edge for Windows Clint should have the ability to dial this service. And if you've noticed, my identity now has one available. Uh, since this is Windows, I do need a new PowerShell prompt, which I'll apparently put up here, which is not where I want it. So let me exit that real quick. That is taking forever. My OBS is apparently uh, taking plenty of resources. I want it from here. So because it's tracking my mouse, I have to be a little bit more careful about how I make. All right, we'll try this one more time. <laughs> try it one more time. All right, fine. It'll be up here. Great. Well, that's where it's going to be. So let's do, let's do a curl to HTTP colon slash slash. Um, when I click on this, I can see it's very difficult to read. I'll click this open. It's called simple web test. And it's intercepting port 80. Boom, that should work. There's the whale. Fantastic. All right, so everything's working so far. We have a simple service. This is not wildcard DNS. Now let's go down and let's do the same thing, but we'll do it for wildcard DNS. Let's make an intercept. So this says uh, intercept star dot blue and port 8000 to 8000. Now, when you're doing a wildcard DNS, you really can't change the port number. So be careful. Now notice I'm adding 8000. Let's, let's add that bind, inter, uh, bind config as well. It says intercept. Well, we don't need UDP because we'll just be doing TCP, but here it says TCP UDP. It says forward the address of true. That's very important. So whatever it is that we end up sending and getting intercepted, we'll get forwarded. We're saying these are the websites that we allow. So uh, web.test.blue and web-test.blue are what we'll intercept and forward the port and allow port ranges. These are the port ranges I want to allow. So those are the ones I can forward along. Um, now let's go back and create a service that uses those configs. Okay. And then let's create that bind policy, same thing that we did before, only this time we're using wildcard web test. Do the same thing we did before, but now make a dial policy. And now let me make a dial policy. I should have two services in my client, and I do. You'll see it says star.blue. So now, if we've done everything correctly, and I didn't even realize my whale, oops, there we go. My whale was being covered by this so let's get this a little out of the way and shrink it down some let's go back to the whale there we are and now we can do that curl to simple web test again you can see i still have access to it that way but now we should be able to do um well let's, let's try web test blue on port 8000 and i expect this to time out so let's give it a timeout of five seconds oh can't even resolve it even better well now let's use web test web hyphen test dot blue and look, it worked. Or web.test.blue. And that worked as well. Well, fantastic. 
So in the span of a few minutes, we have created an entire desktop, uh, entire Docker network that has five edge routers, a hidden web test blue web server that returns that little Docker whale. Uh, we've added an, an identity to the ZD desktop edge for Windows, and we've created a couple services and provided access through the ZD desktop edge for Windows into that Docker environment. That's all for this video. Thanks a lot and take care.